Hello folks, uh, climbing the first rung of the ladder, DILR, I mean how do I get any marks in a section? How do I got, get marks in a section? That's what we are looking to handle. Uh, we've done this for quant already and we're doing for DILR. The idea is very often I find students saying, look, you're talking about stuff to go from 90th to 95th. I'm worried that I will get zero in a section and the section that's uh, most scary is LRDI. And so I've taken this exam lots of times. And I have a very big one part of my brain saying, look, that you should take this, there's a chance you can get zero in this. It, I can easily imagine getting stuck in a puzzle for 20 minutes, spending another 10 minutes, not getting it right, and not having enough time to attack one more. And it can happen. So the, 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 the prospect exists. Right? Sometimes I find students saying, look, all DILR sets are tough. I find myself flitting from one to the other. And that, that kills my, my score. And so, uh, the, the method we had for quant was to say, simplify it, narrow down your topics and do one thing. Okay? If you think about the topic-wise split for, for LRDI, this is a mess. It doesn't fall into categorization. I, I'm very fond of saying, don't even do this for LRDI. What is a, uh, an arrangement puzzle? Everything is an arrangement puzzle or nothing is an arrangement puzzle. And so, what is, a, what is a roots and networks puzzle? I don't know. So, there are very few of these that are clear classifications and very few of these that really mean anything and so decision making in LRDI is not not easy you have to look at the four sets and say this one seems right up my alley and what would be my plan for saying I want to have a mechanism to get some marks in LRDI and so you need to build this confidence that given you have selected a set in LRDI you can see it through so it's very 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 important in LRDI to solve sets all the way through when you're taking mocks, sectionals and practice. So in the mock setting, we keep flitting from one to another, one to another, this is not happening, 15 more minutes that happened, 10 more minutes I come back to this because I want to optimize my decision making. But the more you do that, the more there is a chance that you keep flitting and you get zero at the end. So the first step in LRDI is to say, I'm going to say spend some time, maybe two minutes, maybe three minutes, maybe four minutes in identifying a set and then saying, I will see this set through. Or there will there comes a time where you feel like, look, I'm not going to get it right. That decision making of dumping one and going to the another, I'm going to stand here and say you should do it and implement that and, and optimize for somehow going to the next level in LRDA. But initial step, I would strongly urge you whenever you do a mock or whenever you do a mock analysis to take up LRDA sets, be time agnostic. Don't have a timer running and see it through right to the end. I have struggled with some LRDI sets for upwards of 40 minutes. That means if I had taken up that LRDI set in CAT, I would have got zero. But after I cross 20th minute, I look at that set and say, this is a monster. This is a beast. I hate it. It's not going to appear in CAT. I'm never going to touch this if it appears in CAT, but I'm seeing it through. You need to have the confidence of saying, look, I can attempt any LRDI or almost any LRDI set and get five out of five questions, right? Given I spend 30 minutes on it, 40 minutes on it. The moment you see that happening, your, your brain gets rewired and say, and it says, one set to ho jayega. Then it comes back to seeing if you can maybe do one set and one more question, one set and two more questions, maybe even aspire for two sets. But for the first set, question selection is very important. Decision making is important. Jumping from one set to another appropriately is important. But even before you come to this zone, Building the confidence to say, LRDI set, one thing, I can hang with it for 35 minutes and see it through. That is super important. So many students take this exam and never crack one set correctly. So many students take mocks and never set, crack one set correctly. And so, so many, astonishingly high. So if you look at the paper, last year's paper, if it got one set correct, it would have been a 90th percentile. That is 90% of students for taking this exam, do not get one LRDA set completely correct. So if you say, I don't care if it takes 35 minutes, I'm going to see this set through. And you're confident that that will happen. You're know, already at 90th percentile. You have only a little bit to catch up with the rest if you want to. And so you for that, for that in getting off the zero place, it's super important to hang in with sets, to be there and say whether you're doing practice exam, advanced test, previous year papers, uh, mock exams, section test, it doesn't matter. Keep the timer on and do whatever you need to do. 
grapple with all variables. With a timer off, there is a part of your brain that gets tired after 19-20 minutes. And it says, ye nahi hoega, go to the other one. And which is a, which is, which is an exam type decision making thing. But for your confidence in cracking to improve, you have to say 20 minutes, big deal. Another 10 minutes, I'll hang in here and see this through. And you are, you should need to feel like 80% of LRDA sets, if I'm given 40 minutes, I'll be able to crack it. That's the first barrier. Somehow cultivate that. And then bring back the decision making variables, how you leave one and go to the other, how you cut your losses, how you don't worry about sunk cost. All of that we can come to later. But first step, you should say, any paper, even if I select the wrong DILR sets, but if I've taken this decision by minute number four, I have 36 minutes to solve one LRDA set, there's a 90% chance that I will slowly solve it and get it right. You need to solve, get right, get 15 marks in the bag, four marks in a row, to say, ek to hui jayega. One is in the bag. That, that idea that in most papers I'll have one in the bag, just magical for LRDI. So first step, build for that. Get one in the bag. Get sure that you can back yourself and solve one. It's magical. That takes you to 90th percentile. Climbing so high, doing one set consistently right. Get that. And then we'll think about, okay, now I've got one in the bag. Can I be confident of one in the bag in 30 minutes, in 25 minutes? Can I have a mechanism where I get one and then play for one more? That we'll add later on. But one in the bag is not just about selecting right, it's not about uh, taking a, uh, shifting addition making, it's very much about having the temperamental strength and confidence to say, even after 20 minutes, I'm gonna hang in here and finish this. And, and that is slightly different from the typical decision making you do, where you say, look, 10 minutes, nine hora, shift karo. The 10 minutes, nine hora, shift karo is for somebody who's done a lot of practice, who built this confidence, who can play potentially for two sets right or one and a half sets right. Till you get that confidence, take one, grapple with it for 50 minutes, mark my answers, be confident they'll be right. Do it for 10 sets in a row, your mind will change. You suddenly believe, ek to hoi jayega. But ek to hoi jayega is magical. And your the first burden, to, the hurdle to cross is that one. You cross that, everything else will fall in place later on. That takes you to the top 10%, super crucial. Right? Best wishes, guys. Thank you.